The great American eclipse is right around the corner. And before you plan your nine-hour drive or fly or whatever, I'm going to go over the forecast for Monday afternoon at 1.30 p.m. when the eclipse is going to occur. And I'm going to talk about where the clouds are going to be, what the weather is going to be like. And I'm also going to give you some secret, secret forecasting weapons that you can use even after this video. So, you know, even a couple days after, you can use these and you don't have to be a meteorologist or anything like that to use them. They're pretty simple. So that's what we're going to talk about in this episode of State of the Weather Address. And welcome to the other side of the video here. You've made it. And let's just get right into it here. This is the first website that I'm going to use to forecast the eclipse. Okay, this is weather models that anyone can use. It's called PivotalWeather.com. And I'll be putting all the links in the description below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this latest eclipse cloud forecast. It's a button they made just for this. And we're taken to a page here. And this is uh, the GFS model the ensemble okay they have a lot of different runs and different variations of one of the models and they just kind of blend them together these ensemble models are the best to use this far out you know until you're about a day or two before the event but anyway this is a forecasting the total cloud cover percentage okay so 100 percent would be totally cloudy and zero percent would be totally clear anything in between would be you know partly to mostly cloudy so this is the path of the eclipse right here where it's going to be 100%. Okay, so it'll be a total eclipse in that little path right there. Anything around it, there's going to be a partial eclipse. Okay, so we're just going to focus on the, the center area here where many people are going to probably be driving in that little red area. And this is uh, for Monday afternoon around 1 p.m. Okay, so between 1 and 1.30. And this is where the, the eclipse is going to be at the time, where the moon is going to cross over the sun. And uh, these models only go out every six hours. So you can see the, the hours over here if you want to go six hours earlier, six hours later. But the eclipse is only going to last, you know, a certain number of minutes. And so this is really the only frame we can look at at the moment, uh, the only model frame that we can look at with this particular model. Now, the day of the event, we'll be able to look at every 15 minutes with some of the models but right now we're still a little far out so that's uh the best we're going to get so this is the cloud cover forecast and uh really you can see clouds out here clouds over here clouds over here this is going to change a lot but uh this is one of the tools that you can use to forecast where the cloud cover is going to be so this area in nebraska is going to be probably partly cloudy you know maybe some areas of clearness farther south and farther west but again it's going to change a lot and so just to show you how it changes we can go back to a previous model run by clicking this run uh, button up here and you can go to the previous model run six hours earlier and see what it looked like so still fairly the same you can go back a little further still pretty much the same a little more cloudy you can go back even further maybe to 12z or 18z and you get a little bit more cloud cover but anyway that's how you can test the consistency if it changes a lot from run to run that means the model probably doesn't have a good handle on the clouds if it stays the same the model probably has a better handle on it so there might be a little more confidence with that but right now there's uh, some pretty good confidence with this model with there being a lot of clouds in the Great Lakes Midwest region and also maybe in the Rockies and the southeastern United States and the area in the center of the country here uh, seems to be a bit of a wild card right here. Uh, so we'll go over that uh, in a second. But that's just looking at the GFS run. If we want to look at a different model run, such as the Canadian, we're going to go over to this ensemble section. And we're going to click on CMC. That's the Canadian model. The one we were just looking at was the GEFS, which is the American one. So the Canadian model run, it also has clouds. Southeastern United States, Colorado the Great Lakes region, and has even more clouds in Nebraska with maybe an average of 50 to 60% in this area. And so that, that might be unfortunate because I think a lot of people are going to plan to go in that area. So you might want to keep an eye on this. You know, 
this area over here seems to be consistently clear. This area does too. The the middle of the country is gonna be kind of a wild card here. So that's what the uh, Canadian model run says, and we can go back a few hours, you know, yesterday, see how consistent it is. 12z, 0z, and the Canadian's kind of changing a little bit more. It doesn't have as much of a good handle on this, but. We can see that both the GFS and the Canadian have some consistent areas of clouds in the Great Lakes and Midwestern region, and also in the Southeast and in the Rockies. So those areas, uh, I would say, have a higher likelihood of having clouds. And then we can look at the GFS, which is not an ensemble model. It's just one model run. Again, you don't have to know, have, you don't have to know the, uh, the technical aspects of this, just... Look at the uh, different model runs, look at the cloud cover, and kind of uh, go from there. This is the GFS, tons of cloud cover out here in the uh, Midwestern region, southeastern United States. Some areas in the Rockies, there's actually a little trough sitting out here. So there's going to be clouds kind of out underneath and behind it. Uh, it'll really depend how far that moves inland. There's southwest flow, westerly flow up here in the uh, northern U.S., and so that area is looking uh, pretty likely to have clouds. And if you're wanting to see the jet stream, I've clicked on upper air soundings right, or upper air height right here and clicked on 250 millibar. It's the only options they give us, but this is the GEFS. It's that uh, American model. I think it's doing a little bit better. And this is the jet stream. You can kind of see a trough out here. There's gonna be clouds kind of behind it in this area. And then you have westerly flow up in this region with maybe a little bit of a a dip in the jet stream right here that could favor clouds out in this area right here and that's that's the signal you're seeing you're seeing clouds the models forecasting clouds in that area you might see some patchy clouds up here in this area and you're starting to see that in the rockies as well so the uh, upper air the jet stream kind of looks like the cloud cover forecast and stuff so lining up uh, pretty well for that area and to look at uh, precipitation we can go to the GFS, which is this one right here. You're going to have to switch to this one. You can go to surface and precipitation, precipitation, precipitation type and rate, and that's the precip. That's uh, showing rain, okay, for the areas in green. Got a little bit of a low pressure system here, which really out ahead of that thing, probably not good uh, for, uh, for clouds and stuff like that. You're probably going to get a lot of clouds. And you can see it's forecasting rain for that area. Not looking the best for the eclipse, but out here looks pretty good out here. Out here looks pretty good. So those two areas have consistently looked pretty good for clear weather during the eclipse. This area being the wild card and this area uh, being pretty cloudy. So that's the precipitation map. All right, so I'm going to show you one more website that you can use. This is called weather.us. Again, this will be in the description below this video. This also shows your uh, cloud cover and this area being clear one and 100 percent being cloudy so the darker grays uh, are going to be cloudy or conditions and you can see that this that would favor this area being cloudy this area being cloudy right here the southeast being cloudy kind of similar to our other maps this is the european computer model by the way you can look at your different models up here so you got the european canadian u.s model australian I think that's the German model. I haven't used that one yet, but you can select your models up there. Right now we're under the European, which was not offered on that other website. So that's what's unique about this website. And so it also agrees with those three areas being cloudy, with Nebraska being a little bit more cloudy than the other areas. And again, clear out here. This looks pretty confident and kind of clear out in this area. That signals... Uh, pretty good confidence as well. Maybe more partly cloudy there, but yeah, looking uh, pretty good there. And then we got, you know, our other models. We can look at the U.S. model. That's the GEFS or the GFS we we're looking at. The Canadian model, and then we'll look at the Australian one. They all look a little bit different, but there is some consistency with clouds up in this region down in this region as well and nebraska being kind of that wild card with some clouds and some not having clouds but this is kind of what you want to do is you want to look at all these different models 
you want to look at other model runs, and you just want to find areas of consistency because when you're more than one day out or two days out, this is going to change so much. Storms can change it, and all types of things can change cloud cover. And so that's why you want to look at these consistent areas. Anything I didn't really circle, you know, besides these areas, it's really hard to tell if there's going to be clouds or not. It's going to change quite a bit. The areas I circled, you know, I would probably maybe make plans for areas that weren't, you know, in this area, in this area, and in this area. Maybe make plans out here, down in this area. So with all that being said, good luck for everyone going out and viewing the eclipse. It's probably not going to be one for several more years, uh, at least in the U.S. And, uh, yeah, good luck, and hopefully the weather cooperates. And uh, with that being said, if you want more of these weather forecasting tutorials and uh, weather forecasting videos and are interested in weather and space and all that type of stuff, we got more videos coming out probably on a weekly basis here on Weather Decoded. So go ahead and be sure to subscribe. Click the subscribe button uh, below this video. Now leave a comment, you know, ask questions if you have any about this eclipse or any of the model graphics we used. I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, share this with a friend. You know, if you have anyone that you know going out viewing the eclipse, go ahead and share this video with a friend. So with that being said, good luck viewing the eclipse, and we'll see you soon.